If there's anyone watching that hasn't seen me play this, you're about to find out what this is. It's a new chess variant. I've played this the last couple of times I've streamed. I did post a video on YouTube too. So let's join the queue. I should make an effort to guess my opponent's drawback too. Lethal attraction. You can't make moves that make your pieces farther away from their king. Uh-oh, and my opponent's name is Sniping Eric. <laughs> oh no. I can't play, wait, I can play this. Wait, what? Oh, farther away from my opponent's king. Ah, okay. I I thought that was referring to my king because e6 moves away from my king. But if it's my opponent's king, okay. Interesting. So the opening won't be so bad. Can I castle in this game? Like if I castle, that's technically moving, but I have to do the Pythagorean theorem for that. Oh, title Tuesday just finished. Good job to whoever won it. Okay, it looks like I'm coping with the opening. But yeah, I can't retreat. Oh yeah, I can't retreat at all. So I really have to be careful. A6. And this is like a main line of some sort. Usually I play queen c7. But if I play queen c7, my queen won't be able to move backwards. Should I look to try and simplify into the endgame? Yeah, maybe I should just go for trades. Like bishop e4 and takes. I'm also wondering about the line, knight takes e6, d takes e6, queen takes d8. Because I don't think I can legally take back in that line. It's like move away from the king-ish. Okay, but you don't have to worry about that. Play 97. Okay, let's take. Yeah, I don't think castling will be legal for me. Oh, that's pretty rough. Play d5. No, oh, g7's hanging. Maybe f6. Hey, it's Danya. What's up, Danya? I appreciate the raid. If you're just joining, okay, now there's probably a lot more people here that have not seen this before. If you're just joining, I'm playing this new chess variant. It's called Drawback Chess. And this is my drawback. Every move, I have to move towards my opponent's king. The opening hasn't been so bad, but I feel like it's about to get bad. Let's play this. The takes I can take with knight, queen etc. Oh, you can't, I can't make moves that move farther away. So maybe I can make moves that are equidistant, if that makes any sense. Yeah, hello to more people. Also, my opponent has a drawback, but it's hidden from me. So I don't know what it is. And I can't snipe them. Unfortunately, I assume they're not streaming. Play this now? Wait, this is looking good. If my opponent's actually sniping me, it'll be an even bigger accomplishment to win this game. Let's go, okay. I'm up material now. Bishop e6. Looks playable. So if I play queen a5, is that moving farther away? I have to do some math equation. I don't want to do the math. I'll play rook c8. It's a natural looking move. Because queen a5 moves... Oh, oh, now... Oh, dear. Wait, white can, white can treat me as like a, a voodoo doll. 
by moving their king and then I have to basically be a puppet. Voodoo doll or puppet? Maybe puppet. So now my pieces have to go this way, like towards the king side, which isn't the worst thing ever. But like if I play this and then take, I can't take back with pawn. Okay. Queen e8. I gotta watch my time too. Oh no. B7 is about to fall. Oh, my whole queen side is going to dissolve. That's not good. I can't I can't do anything about my queen side. I just have to go all out for the attack. So we're playing with I think 2 second increment. Okay, that's probably decent. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, that's not good. Okay, let's play this. This is going to get really difficult soon. I could play b5 maybe. Let's take b5. They might not be sniping. If they were sniping, they would take the pawn. Okay, now I can take this. Let's check. But I can't retreat to g5. I still don't know what my opponent's drawback is. Oh, that's a good move. Let's play this. Oh, it's a fork. Wait, it's still not easy to win, though. Check, f5 maybe? f4? The good thing is I can keep moving towards the king. It's very, really close to flagging there. Yeah, if rook takes g4, I can't take it. Or can I? I won't find out. I'm going to play queen d4. Is that a checkmate? That's a checkmate. The game ends with capturing the king, so... And whatever move my opponent makes, yeah, gg. Okay. Wow. So this was my opponent's drawback. Inside the lines. So my opponent can't move to the edge of the board. You can't make moves that start and stop on the edge. I'm trying to understand that. You can't move onto the edge of the board. Oh, the piece is already on the edge. Chad is explaining it to me. Oh, you, you can make moves that start and stop on the edge. Okay, I see. I see, okay. So did my opponent abide by that? I guess they did. It's funny, like if they were sniping, they would like to take my rook on d8. But they can't because that's on the edge. Interesting. Oh, that's an interesting battle then. I imagine my drawback was worse. It's not so clear. MCGJP says, if your king was on h8, he could never take you. Yeah, the problem is, like, even if I tried to keep my king on the edge, my opponent could create a situation where I have to move my king closer to 
the points king because of my drawback. So even if I knew my opponent's drawback, I couldn't like just exploit it to not lose. Wait, the king moved to the edge though. Oh, the king never left the edge. I see. Because the king, yeah, the king was on the first rank and then moved to the H file. Got it. Okay. And then when it left the edge, it can't return to the edge. I see. And then same thing with the rook too. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, the website is called drawbackchess.com. This is probably one of like the most hard fought games I've had playing on this site. So I'll go back to lobby and I'll play another game. And I'll probably play someone else who might be watching the stream. If you're the one who is playing me, smart yellow kangaroo, don't look at my drawback. Exit out of the stream and um, yeah, don't snipe. <laughs> uh, it's hard to enforce that though. So this is my drawback. Wait, what? Wow, what a drawback. That's so random. For four moves, starting on 16, you must end your turn occupying F6. Always play F6. Okay, so if I win the game before then, then it will, probably won't matter. So what opening do I play? I don't know, I gotta play King's Pawn and... I mean, my whole opening strategy has to revolve around getting a piece to F6. This might end really badly. Oh, hello to shawarma. Wait, I, uh, I should have thought longer before making my first move. I might just try and win before move. Oh, it's going to be tough, though. Let's play bishop c4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta play this. Going for f5. So what are 12 turns remaining? Wait, so it's only move 16. So I just have to survive through move 20, basically. Can I get a pawn to f6 somehow? Maybe queen g4. Maybe I can induce g6 and then plant a knight on f6. I still got time. They're threatening the g pawn. That's annoying though. The bishop takes knight because now my knight can't really access that square. And I feel like this is a ticking time bomb. Like how how do I get there? Like e five. I gotta get the knight in somehow. Like e five and. I think I, I should start with e5. At least clamping down a little bit. My turn must end. Can I play the queen g5? Okay, I, I think this is the way to go.
Maybe I already messed up. I don't know though. Yeah. Let's move 10. Okay, at least I have a clear path. Do I take the bishop? One. So move 12, 13, 14, 15. I'll get there just in time. Starting on move 16, okay. Oh, this is intense. The pawns are ready to help support the knight. Yeah, that's a super annoying move. But I have this move. Even if I lose a g5 pawn, knight g4 is coming. Okay, now I'm guaranteed to get there. But is my position like in too many shambles? Yeah, let's just go in. I'm, what am I down? I'm down the exchange. But my knight's so solid there. And this is move 16. Okay, so four more moves. Crusade. <laughs> okay, I feel like a crusader. I wonder what my opponent's drawback is. Okay, let's start focusing on normal chess. Although uh, it's still very unstable. There, there. Rook B1, maybe? Bishop D3. I mean, what, two more moves? Four moves. So 16, 17. I imagine it'll indicate when my crusade is over. Let's play this move. I think I've completed it. Oh, good move. Okay, I think I no longer have the drawback. <laughs> but what is this position now? Now now I'm just playing chess. Rook H1's coming. Oh dear. Play this. I'm trying to survive. Position's pretty bad. Ah, good move. I'm down of I'm down so much material. But never resign when you have a knight. I'm trying to imagine like what my opponent's drawback could be. I'm trying to think of previous drawbacks. The problem is there's no stalemate in this game either. I guess I'm hoping that they can't move to the edge to take my king. 
Have they followed that yet? Do. My opponent's drawback was boastful. Oh, that would have been hard to exploit. So I would have won the game if I, if at any point I won material. Oh, good job to my opponent. Like they, they outplayed me even after I successfully fulfilled my challenge. Uh, maybe I should have played rook b1, just to avoid the trade. Oh, that's cool. So I I can see I can see the status here. Ah, so wait, would I have won if I took the pawn on e6 on like the first move? Oh, I was playing uh MCGJP. JGP. Oh, uh fellow fellow I am. That's funny. MC, yeah, <laughs> I guess I had no chance of like winning towards the end there. Yeah, that was a that was a difficult drawback. Thanks for not sniping. Okay, we'll do we'll do at least one more. Playing anonymous. Oh, okay. Th this is interesting. This is a very interesting drawback. You must alternate between white and black squares. So I guess this opening is reasonable, like white and then black. And now white. Oh, this might get difficult quickly. Let's play this. If on Poisson, I can take back. Now black. And the thing is, let's say we get into like an end game where I'm just moving knights. The knights naturally alternate between black and white. So I don't really have to think if I'm going for a knight maneuver. So I probably want to keep my knights. If my bishops are less valuable given this drawback. Okay, here. I, mean, I want to play bishop f5, but then g4, and I can't move the bishop. So yeah, bishops are actually really bad with this. Can I castle? Also, f6 takes, I can't take back. Yeah, what to do? Maybe I do play knight f5. And then if g4, knight h4. Oh, there's also ideas of um, knight g3. Which looks attractive. Yeah, pawns also naturally alternate between white and black. It's so like I could play h h five, preparing h four. It's kind of nice. Okay, now I'm not sure if my opponent blundered the rook or has a drawback, maybe preventing the rooks from moving. Yeah, this knight is just doing work. Uh, bishop f5. I mean, the problem is if I play bishop f5 and white attacks my knight, I can't move the knight. So maybe I should play pawn h5 to help reinforce. Uh oh. I mean, they're only going to take the knight if they're sniping. Oh, 
I have to watch out for like Queen B5 check. Because then I, I wouldn't be able to play King F8, but I could block on the light squares. Like now, like bishop f5 is also, it's slightly risky. Maybe just c6. Dark square next move. Mm. <laughs> I want to play bishop f5. Maybe king f8 just to be safe. Could move my queen. The nice thing about the queen is it has access to uh, multi multicolor squares, black and white squares, so it's not getting trapped. Oh, neither knight can move. Okay, pawn a5. Really, I'm really curious what my opponent's drawback is. Like, they gave me the rook on h1. Now rook a3 is like a random move. Do you lose if you can't follow the rules when in check? Yeah, so in that case, I would have to leave my king hanging. And the game ends with uh, capturing the king. But it would be really annoying if we see queen takes f5 here. <laughs> okay, this is going well, though. Um, b6. I don't know what to do, actually. Like, more of my attractive moves are on light squares. Or are they? Okay, yeah, three knights. Oh, but now I can't save the bishop. I should really start moving knights. Um, play c5. Okay. I'm going to do for a dark square next. It's probably safest to trade queens. Do okay, I'll take the queen. White white could survive though. Wait, white could just keep alternating. If white knows my drawback, I can't take the king. That would be hilarious. Oh, that's so bad. Wait, there goes my queen. <laughs> what is this? Oh, no. Wait, let's make a... Yeah. There we go, okay. Uh, a pawn's drawback was Ego Clash. You can't have two non-pawns on the same file. Oh, that sounds difficult, actually. Oh, 
oh, hey, they, they implemented a drawback ELO. So I guess the higher the ELO, the more difficult the drawback is. That's cool. I'll try and raise Rosen's drawback ELO. So there's no point in this game. My opponent had two non-pawns on the same file. I mean, that didn't prevent them from playing Rook H2, though. Ah, it prevented the king from moving off the e-file. Yeah, it's actually really difficult for white to develop. Because neither... Like, the bishops... Like, how do you develop in the opening? Because naturally, when you move the knight, it's going to be on the same file as rook or bishop or king. Same thing with the queenside knight. And then bishops too. So that, that explains like the weird kind of opening, like moving a lot of pawns. Yeah, I probably had the less severe drawback. Okay, shall I do one more? What's my score today? Two out of three. Back to lobby, join Q. Game aborted. Oh no, my brave gray panda. Rook buddies, you can't move your rooks until you've connected them. Oh, that's a very tame drawback. Was my opponent sniping, saw my drawback, and aborted because that's really not a, a bad drawback. Back to lobby. Oh, dear. You must move as... You must move as least far. Wait, I can't read. You must move as least as far. Manhattan, what, what's Manhattan distance? I have to Google this. Manhattan distance. Well, they're Cartesian coordinates. Uh, it's a simple way. Wait, in a simple way of saying it's a total sum of the difference between the X and Y coordinates. Oh, Manhattan distance. Okay, I see. I think I understand based on this picture. So no Pythagorean theorem. As your opponent's last move. Okay, I think I understand that. So what opening do I want to play, G3? So basically, my opponent's move is going to dictate my move. And I guess I want to preserve some long-distance moves in the event that my opponent tries to mess with me. Like, I can't... Wait, can I play this? How do knights move? One, two, three. So I can't play bishop g2. But I can develop my knight. I can't play c4 either, because... Yeah, that's a Manhattan distance of three. <laughs> okay, let's develop a knight. Oh, man. I wonder what casting counts as. Probably a distance of two. Wait, do I lose if I can't match the distance? Also, I have to move a knight. What if my opponent starts a horsey dance like Nepo against Dubov? Then I, I'm forced to do the horsey dance because I, I don't have any other moves that match the distance of a knight. Unless it's... Unless I have bishop h3. But now bishop h3 doesn't make sense. Okay, now, now my other bishop can develop. No horsey dance. Man, this could get annoying if we see knight before. 
Oh, it's already annoying. I have to develop my bishop. Wait, am I losing? Yeah, I'm just realizing here this this could end like really badly. Let's play this, maintaining some distance or some distance moves. Yeah, this is really bad. Because I can't, like, I can't defend. I can't play e4. And if takes, I can't, I can't even take back. I play bishop h3. I think I have to play this move. Oh, that's so bad. My opponent's probably probably wondering why, why what did, what did I just do? Can I play king d2 now at least? Also, knight takes e2 would have like beat me there. But opponent would have had to been sniping. So I guess king d2. Oh no, do I have queen d2 taken and castle? The castling's not enough, I don't think. Okay. Oh, this is really bad. Oh. Well, I'm down a knight and I've bomb clouded. I play king d2 to try and save my king. Yeah, I think what I need to do is get rid of Fox Knights like, ASAP. Like if Bishop takes F3, I might even consider C3. I mean, there's a lot of moves that just crushed me here. But okay, my opponent's taking their time. They they might be coping with their own drawback. And this is going to turn into a bullet game. Maybe they're just taking their time trying to understand the deep strategic value of king d2. e5, wow. I mean, I, I can't... Wait, what? I was going to say I can't take, but I guess I did. Ah, because, yeah, that's manhand distance of 2. But now what do I do? Take back with pawn? Okay, so I have to match this distance. Maybe this. And then rookie one is coming. Play rookie one. Long distance move. So that's a distance of two. So I can also move the distance. It's a distance of four, I think. Okay, I'm still only down a piece. Any chance I get to move my king, I should probably... Well, here maybe this move, but then knight... So maybe this move? Yeah, knight e4 is no longer winning because I have rook takes e4. Oh man, I have to take. <laughs> they play the long distance move, I had to match it. I can't take either knight. Oh, the knights are so annoying. Okay, I played that move just in time.
No, 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 no. Okay, I want on time. Uh, oh. oh, that's so funny. Opponent's drawback was you can't give check. <laughs> so they couldn't actually exploit my drawback. It was still winning for, like, Black could still win. They would have just had to take all my pieces. If I run out of legal moves, I lose. Yeah, the game ends in... So with all these games, it ends with capturing the king. I don't think it's even possible to have a stalemate. Or if it is like a traditional stalemate, then it's considered a win for the other player. Yeah, again, if you're just joining, um, the way this works is you start a game, each player is given a drawback, but you don't know the other, you don't know your opponent's drawback. So, okay, we'll, we'll do one last one. Uh, this isn't so bad. I think I can cope with this. Okay. I think for this, I can just play normal chess. Like capturing twice in a row. I just can't have like a square where we exchange a lot of things. I'll just play my main opening. Like even if my opponent is sniping, it's I, I still feel pretty confident. <laughs> Castle Queen side. Now the problem is if they take and I take and they take, I can't take anything. So this is maybe the first moment of truth. Okay. <laughs> I can't take the knight because that would be capturing twice in a row. But thankfully, like after this, I'm not losing anything. And now I can take. So is my opponent going to exploit my drawback again? We'll soon find out. Okay, they don't. Hey, it's Keddy. Thanks for the raid. Hope you had a good stream. Let me uh let me copy paste your name so I don't misspell. Shout out to Keddy. If you're just joining, I'm playing drawback chess. It's uh it's a new fun chess variant. Been doing this for a little while since Title Tuesday finished. Uh, the way this works is both me and my opponent have a drawback. This is my drawback. I can't capture twice in a row. My opponent has a drawback which is hidden to me. And so far, this game is going pretty smoothly. Um, queen e3. I think the strategy is to like keep building up the attack without actually taking anything. Okay, well here I kind of have to take. It's not that bad though. Rook h3. Yeah, trying to build up the h-file pressure.
It's hard to actually like deduce what my opponent's drawback could be. It's not alternating color squares. Whoa. Hey, welcome back, com info unips. I'm attacking the rook now. Okay, now let's take. It would be crazy if if black plays rook d1 here. I would have to play king c2. Okay, now. Wait a minute. Oh, I can't even take that. Ah. Yeah, this is a problem. The a3 preventing queen b4. If I take maybe this move. I just have to like keep simplifying. I'll figure to a a situation where my drawback will be less exploitable. Okay, so now if I take, it should be fine. King c2. Oh, it's not pleasant though. Take Queen B four. That's annoying. <laughs> I can't take the knight. Ugh. Well, there goes my material advantage. Thank you, bits not bites. Happy nine, happy eight months. So what to do? Ugh, I'm I'm worse objectively. Black has two miners for the rook. Two miners and a pawn for the rook. And still no sign of my opponent's drawback. Like, I want to take the bishop, but I won't be able to recapture. Hide with the king. Ooh, okay, that's some nice gift. I won't be able to take the knight next, but depending where the king goes. Check. Again, I can't take the knight next. I just captured c7. I think I can keep giving checks. I'll hopefully be able to take the knight with check. Okay, well there, there we go. Oh, my opponent had the H file drawback. Or they, they can't move the H file. Well, I guess that became less relevant later in the game. Yeah, here they, I mean, they could have moved to the G file. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm not sure if my opponent actually, like, figured out my drawback or exploited it. I mean, it seemed that way based off this move, but maybe it was just, like, an oversight they got fortunate. And then later they could have punished, like, they could have really exploited me. Um, where was it? 
I guess rook d1 isn't that bad though, because I have king c2. I tried to make it so it wasn't that easy. Yeah, so there is a, um, if you go to lobby, the way the site works, I don't think there's any way to see all the drawbacks, but when you click drawback glossary, it'll show you all the drawbacks that you've encountered. So I guess the more you play, the more drawbacks you can see. And there, I guess this is cool. We can sort by rating. So this, I think the lower rating is considered less severe. And then this one, this is a funny one. Can't move the same piece type as your opponent's last move. Wait, which one is more severe? When your opponent captures, you must move backwards. Oh, that sounds pretty severe. Yeah, they're different in different ways. And some probably match up against others more effectively. But the whole concept of this game is to like level the playing field between players. So usually when you when you go to the site for the first time, you select your level and that will kind of determine the severity of the drawbacks you get initially. Thank you, Crispy Lips. Oh, you can also kind of determine here. Oh, what if I click this? I prefer hard drawbacks. Okay, I'll, I'll play one more game. <laughs> uh, final game. This is turning into a long stream. But I hope people are having fun. So joining the queue. I just ran an ad, so um, if there's anyone watching that's not a subscriber, I guess you can't quite see the stream. So it, it makes it less, I, I'm less uh, susceptible to getting sniped. Okay, well, I, I guess I'm getting what I asked for. It's a harder drawback. I have to alternate between pawn and non-pawn moves. Okay, let's play the hippo. I feel like hippo is a, a decent option for this. Oh no. Please. Always fun and entertaining. Use Prime or just subscribe. Do it now. Oh, thank you, Amazing Lines. Appreciate that. Okay, well now I take, I take. I'm still alternating. <laughs> My hippo is a little bit uh, disturbed. Yeah, what happens when I run out of pawns? I probably just lose if I run out of pawns. So, I mean, if black plays bishop g4, it's good that my knight is defended by a pawn and a non-pawn. Yeah, there's been cases where, like with other drawbacks, where if you run out of legal moves, then you just lose. It's, it's not actually stalemate. It was like the other day I had a situation where I almost got excited. Wait, I have to move a, I have to move a pawn. Mm. A five or a three?
I'm trying to figure out my opponent's drawback because they're they're playing in a very weird style. Like they could have that distance drawback, maybe. I don't know though. Like it's hard to think about what they have while also trying to figure out what my plan is. Oh, also, yeah, I have to move a non-pawn. Or G1, I guess. So I'm controlling the G file. Yeah, as this game progresses, my pawns are going to be more difficult to move. Like, the opening is probably the easiest phase for me. Okay, so now I have to move a pawn. This seems like a logical move. Rook a4 is possible, and then I can play knight c3. Wait, I have to move a non-pawn. That's kind of annoying. Bishop is attacked. At the very least, I'll try and stay up on the clock, preparing a5. Yeah, trading probably makes sense here. Okay, so I'm due for a pawn move. Wait, no, I'm due for a non-pawn move. Next move is a pawn move. And this move would be really annoying. And I have I still have pawns that can legally move, thankfully. Now I'm due for another pawn move. Wait. Maybe d3. Oh, maybe I should have played h5. Not sure. Oh, well, now it's too late to play h5. I could take on d5, though. Wait a minute. To watch out for bishop takes and then takes. Okay, let's take on d5. Yeah, it could be really bad if my king starts getting attacked. Okay, well, this is good. Do for non pawn. The next move will be pawn. Wait. Like this. I have to move a pawn now. I have this move. It looks like I'm going to be winning on time. Not yet, though. I won on time. Oh, that's difficult. Wow. That's really difficult. Scorched earth. You can't move to the same square twice. Yeah, that's tough. Because then when I take, black can't, can't take back because you've already moved to d4. So you basically have to win in... 
in less than 64 moves. Because at some point you'll be exhausting all the squares. Oh man, that's probably more difficult than what I had. But if, if somehow I got checked, like here, for example, like in this position, black could take on e2. And then I lose because I have to make a pawn move. Yeah, queen takes e2. I mean, it's it's a move you can really only play if you know my drawback. Um, but I feel like in, in this variance, like checks can be very lethal, even if they don't look good in normal chess. Oh, that was fun. 